Welcome to Delicious by Debbie, and today let's make a chocolate cream pie. Every time I make a chocolate pie, everybody just loves it. They wanna know my recipe, how do you make it, and it is very, very good. But I'm just gonna tell you, it's very simple. I, I cheat a whole lot on it. I do make my own crust, but I'll show you the other steps and how you can make a, a chocolate pie very, very easily. So we're gonna go ahead and get started and make the crust first. So we'll only be using enough ingredients for one crust and we'll get that baking and then we'll make the filling. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here on making our crust. All right, for a one crust pie, we're just going to use one cup of flour and I'm gonna spoon it in. Never just scoop a cup of flour up for pie. You want it to be the right measurement and then level it off with a knife and there's our cup. And we want a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. So we'll go ahead and put that in. For a one crust pie, we only want one third cup of shortening. And I use the butter flavored shortening as I showed you before. And I spray my cup on the inside first with cooking spray so that the shortening won't stick so bad. Makes it easier to clean up. So we need one third cup. So I'm gonna push that down in there. It doesn't have to be smoothed off with a knife or anything, but just so it's close to one third cup. Put that in here. And we're gonna take my pastry blender and we're gonna get that all mixed up to what's nice and fine. I don't like any big chunks of the shortening in with the flour. So we'll get this all mixed up. Make our pie so it can be, the crust can be baking while we're making the chocolate filling. You're gonna be surprised at how easy the chocolate filling is. All right, that's coming together nicely. There we are, nice and fine. And the next step is five tablespoons of ice water. And it's very cold. I've had it in the refrigerator and it's very cold. I'm gonna start with three tablespoons. I'm not gonna put the whole five in at once. One, two, and there's our three. So we'll go ahead and we'll mix that in. I'm gonna need a little bit more. I'm gonna need those other two tablespoons. All right, since we made our pie crust before, I have gotten me this new purple board to roll it, mat to roll it out on. I had several suggestions. I was trying to roll it out last time on a wooden cutting board and we did, it went okay, but it wanted to move around on the counter. And someone suggested if I would take a wet dish cloth and put under it, it would keep it in place. And that probably would have worked just fine. But I had already ordered this. So now I've got now I've got this nice mat to roll it out on. So the dough is all ready to go. Five tablespoons of water was exactly right. So I'm gonna roll this out. Put this on here first. get my rolling pin all flour. Go ahead 
ahead and just kind of roll that around in the flour a little bit. Don't want to handle it too much because I don't want my pie crust to be tough. I want it to be nice and flaky. Then we'll roll this out for this one crust. Measure it, make sure it's going to, if I have a little bit left around the edge of the pie pan, I'm going to be okay. Put a little bit more flour on here. Roll out just a little bit more. All right, that should be just perfect. So I always put it up on my rolling pin. Lift it that way. And put it on the dish, the pie dish. Okay. Like I told you before, if it tears or it doesn't quite fit just right, you can move it around, you can pinch it together. Here I've got some of my pie dish showing and I don't want that. So I can take what broke off here a little bit ago and I can pinch some of that in there to hold that. And I've still got some left that I could put over here. So this is going to... You can see, as you can see, you can, you can work with it, patch it up, whatever you need to do. Last time I made a pie crust, I was gonna share with you that the first time I ever made a pie, I was probably eight or nine years old. And my parents went away and left myself and my siblings at home. And I decided to surprise my dad and make him a pie because he loved pie and his favorite was pumpkin pie. And so I made a nice crust. My crust turned out really nice. And then I had seen my mom poke holes in the crust. There, I've got that all patched up. I'll go back to my story here in a minute. I'm gonna crimp the edges of this. I'll show you what I was talking about, poking holes in it. My mother, I had seen my mother do that and I, in my young mind, didn't reason that you don't do that with every pie. And so I poked holes in it so that it wouldn't bubble up or get big air bubbles in it as it baked. And then I poured my liquid pumpkin filling into it and, all, and baked it and it just turned out beautiful. It was really nice. But when we went to serve it out of the pie dish, it stuck to the pie dish just terrible because I had poked those holes in it and all that liquid pumpkin had gone down through it. And you don't, I didn't realize, but I learned a big lesson. If you're making a two crust pie, you don't poke the holes in it. You only do that when you're making a one crust. And that's what we're doing today. There's our pie shell. And I am gonna poke holes in it. And I even go along the side every few inches. That way when it's baking, it won't get big air bubbles in it. Hope you can see that. I have poked some holes into it. All right, this is all ready for the oven. I have my oven preheated to 350 and I'll probably bake this 15 to 20 minutes. I will let you know at the end how, how long it actually took for it to get finished the way I want it. And we'll start making the pie filling. I have the pie crust in the oven baking. And while it's baking, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I make my chocolate filling. And like I said, I, I cheat completely. This is super easy, anyone can do this. I buy Jell-O cook and serve chocolate pudding. Now this happens to be sugar-free because we like to keep things as light as we can. And I will use skim milk with this, so it will be basically sugar-free, fat-free. And the Cool Whip that I will put on top is a light Cool Whip. Sometimes I have sugar-free, this time I have light. And so I'm gonna go ahead and make these puddings. Now you can use the kind that's instant if you want to, but it doesn't set up and make as nice of a pie as the Cook and Serve, but it's getting harder to find the Cook and Serve. I don't, I don't know why, if Jell-O just isn't making as much of it, and no other brand seems to make the Cook and Serve. So when I find it, I snatch it up, and I use two of them for one pie, two of these small, 1.3 ounce, that's what I use. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put these two into the pan that I have down here. All right. I'm gonna use two packages. If all you can get is the instant, go ahead and use it. It'll work, I've done it before. But we just prefer this, and like I said, we like to keep with the sugar-free as much as we can. All right, now if you were going to make this just to eat as pudding, it calls for two cups of milk. But if you're gonna do it as a pie, you only want two cups, two cups, and instead of four, oops, instead of four cups, oh, what am I doing here, I'm upside down. Instead of four cups of milk, we're gonna do three and a half. That also will help it to set up a little bit more to cut pieces of pie. So I'm gonna put three and a half cups of milk in here. And like I said, I use fat-free skim. So that keeps it really light too. So we want two and th three and a half cups. This is a two cup measuring cup. So we'll put two, we need another one and a half cups. All right, another cup and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. And then I don't leave this alone. I stay right here with this because once it starts to cook, it can stick so easy and burn. So I'm just mixing the pudding into the milk, the powder into the milk. And I'm gonna just let this come to a boil. When it does, it'll be it'll thicken up. You'll see it thicken up. And then of course, when you put it into the pie shell and let it cool in the refrigerator, it uh, sets up even more. Once I get the powder mixed in there, then I'll just stir this with a spoon. I won't use the whisk the whole time. I just wanted to get the powder mixed in so it's nice and smooth. Now we're gonna let that thicken. But I'm still gonna stir it pretty much the whole time because once it starts to thicken up, it wants to stick onto the bottom of the pan. All right, this is thickened and it's starting to boil. I don't want it to splatter clear out of the pan. That has gotten nice and thick now. So it's just where I want it to be. So I'm going to remove it from the heat. I'm going to put it on a cooling rack. Oh, not having the heat on the bottom of it will help it to cool a little bit. I do not let it cool completely. Um, I go ahead and put it into the baked pie shell, even while the pie shell is still warm and the pudding is still warm. But I'll show you what I do. Pudding tends to get a thick crust on the top of it if you don't protect it from that, which you can stir it in, but it usually shows. It usually has some lumps in it. So I'm gonna show you what I do. I take a piece of saran wrap and I put it down in there, right on top of the pudding until I'm ready to use it. And that way it won't get that thick crust on top of it that pudding sometimes gets. So that will protect it a little bit. So I'm gonna let that sit here and cool until our pie shell's done. All right, we're back and the pie shell has finished baking and has been cooling for a little bit on a cooling rack and the pudding that I put the saran wrap on has been cooling also. They're both still warm, but I'm still gonna go ahead and put them in to put the pudding into the pie shell. I like it. The putting to be a little bit warm when I put it in there and it kind of soaks down into the crust just a little bit and makes it nice. So all right. There we go. Two box, two of those little boxes of it is just enough to give you a nice Cool pie. There 
here's our pie. I'm just gonna let that sit and cool for a while and then I'll put it in the refrigerator and once it cools completely, then I'll put Cool Whip on top. Our pie is done and I'm ready to put some Cool Whip on it. It has chilled nicely in the refrigerator and I'm using a light Cool Whip just because we don't need the full fat Cool Whip. So this actually makes a really nice light pie. The only thing that would have fat in it would be the crust. And my crust obviously isn't that thick. So at least we feel a little like we're eating a little bit better if it's not the sugared pudding and the full fat Cool Whip. All right, there we are. There's our finished pie. Go ahead and cut a piece of it. there. I've cut a piece out of there. You can see that the cooked pudding just it sets up a little bit firmer than the uh, instant pudding does. So it makes a, a really nice dessert pie. And I'm going to go ahead and take a bite of that. See what that's like tonight. Mm. That is really good. Hope you'll give it a try.